بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم But we don't get to illallah. I'll say that again. We get the la ilaha. We get all the things that we should reject. All the things that we should not be a part of. All the things that we should not, we should not allow ourselves to be co-opted into. We get all that. But when it comes to, then what should we do? What should we embrace? What should we pursue? For the pleasure of Allah. We don't quite get that. We don't quite get that. And so part of what we have to do, and we have to think about, where is the illallah? Because the illallah says that once I have rejected all of the false deities, all of the false gods, I am wholeheartedly committed to Allah. And that commitment is not simply in what I don't do. That commitment is in what I do. I mean, we notice in the Quran, the Quran is constantly talking about those who struggle in the path of Allah with what? With their money and their selves. Their money and their personal resources. Their money and their human and we have to understand that we have passed the point when protest is enough to sustain us as a community. We have passed that point. And we need to arrive at an understanding of ourselves as a community of Ihsan. Of Ihsan. And the Prophet said, what, what is Ihsan? It is that you worship Allah as if you see him. And even if you don't see him, he sees you. If we truly believe that Allah is seeing us, we would not just be sitting around and just criticizing everything. That doesn't produce anything. Anybody can criticize. My five-year-old daughter can criticize. That's, we think somehow that's deen. That makes me more pious. That makes me closer to Allah. There may have been a time in our history when we needed to do that. We needed to reject. We needed to cleanse. We needed to rid ourselves of certain habits of thinking and other habits as well. We have passed that point. We need to develop a positive predisposition. We need to throw off our fears and we need to start thinking about what do we stand for? What does Allah want? And what can we do collectively as well as individually to make a positive contribution to producing the kind of community that would be pleasing to Allah? That's a major, major, that's a major, you got some psychological furniture that got to be moved over. I'm very serious, I'm not, I'm very serious here. We gotta rearrange that room. We have to rearrange that room. Look around us in this room. How many of our young people do we see in here? You begin to get the point. And why? Because we have rejected, 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 as a result of which we have not been able to put on the field a living, viable, wholesome Muslim culture in this country. As a result of which, that riotous culture out there is ripping our children off. Right. Exactly. It's ripping them off. And all we can continue to do is say, what? Haram. No. 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 That's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. And this is not Dean. It's like Sufjan Authority said. Anybody, 
Anybody can say no. Anybody can say haram. Real knowledge is finding the permission to do what needs to be done on the basis of dalil. And this is part of what we have to get back to. You know, I, I had conversations with some people, and one of the things that I, I really believe is that, you know, a lot of emphasis goes into knowledge, Islamic knowledge, Islamic knowledge, Islamic knowledge. And all of this, of course, is important. No question about that. But we have to pay attention to something here. As much as we are in need of learning some things, we are also in need of unlearning some things. There are some attitudes and some positions that we have learned that have not served us. And we need to unlearn them. And we need to understand that our job here is building, not tearing apart. It's building other human beings, not tearing them apart. It's building social institutions, not just going around and being negative. We have to reorient our whole thinking with regard to who we are in this country as a part of Allah's plan. Now, let me um, just give a few uh, examples of some of what I think are some of the changes that would accompany this kind of reorientation, and then I'll be quiet and, and, and sit down. Um, um, we, we really need to reorient our understanding of both what it means to be a leader and what it means to be a follower. And it's not, this is not a blame game. That would be silly. This is about understanding where we are so we can diagnose the situation and then, then move beyond it. In many instances, somehow, we have contracted this notion of leadership that says to be a leader is to be served. And we don't understand that true leadership it's about service. True leadership is about service. Service to the community for the pleasure of Allah. Who was, the prophet was so much of a servant, they come to his house. Man can't even get no rest in his house. Allah has to send down Quran. Look, when you eat, get out. <laughs> I mean, to that extent, he's a servant of the community. They come to him for service, for advice, for healing. He, they understand this man is looking out for our collective interest. And when leadership, when leadership understands its role to be one of service, service to Allah through serving the interest of the community, then we will be able to make that kind of positive reorientation that I'm talking about. But the onus is not simply on leadership. Because we have a problem with us followers as well. And that's a part of having lost our story. Part of our problem here, and this is especially the case in the West. Especially in the case, is the, the case in the West. We as individuals, you know, we have embraced this, this notion of super hyper individuality. And everybody, we all want the big masjid to be built. We all want the school to be built. We all want a great man of organization, but we all want to do our own thing, individually. We all want to be autonomous, free-floating electrons. We don't want to have any kind of collective commitment. And then we blame leadership when things don't get done.